Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and welcome to tonight's live broadcast of Getting Sketchy. We're going to have some fun tonight, of course, like we always do, uh, but we're also going to take on a really serious challenge this week. It's not serious. We're going to have a lot of fun, but uh, we're going to be doing a color drawing this week. So I'm going to use a little bit of pan pastels and some colored pencils, and we're going to see if we can do this drawing challenge inside of 30 minutes. It's going to be a real challenge to be able to do that, but that's the whole point. The whole point of Getting Sketchy is to have some fun and uh, to create a drawing live with you guys and the goal is to create it within 30 minutes from start to finish. Now, I should preface this by saying that if you want to create more finished, more polished drawings, then you can't do that in 30 minutes. More finished, more polished drawings take a lot of time, and sometimes that means lots and lots and lots of hours. Uh, so don't, don't watch this video or draw alongside of me and uh, think that you can just poof, make something magically appear uh, when you're creating a piece of artwork. It does take hard work, dedication, and uh, of course, a little bit of a level of attention to detail that sometimes takes a lot of time. So, But we're going to have fun tonight. We're going to create a, a looser sketch, a quicker sketch, and uh, we're going to be creating it in color. Um, if you are watching me live on Facebook, I mean on, on YouTube, I want to welcome everybody. I'll do my very best to respond to uh, the uh, you guys in the chat box but if I don't um, don't take it the wrong way I'm just trying to keep create this drawing in 30 minutes I'll take a brief look at it at the end of tonight's broadcast uh, but if you have a question or comment you can head over to the virtualinstructor.com and uh, fill out the contact form and send it directly to me I'll get it that way and speaking of the virtualinstructor.com if you haven't had a chance to check out our website you should do so um, about a third of the well not even a third of the videos that you find on YouTube uh, we what I'm trying to say is we have three to four times more videos on the website so if you want to go check that out you can we have a membership program that is unbelievable it starts with a trial just go to the virtualinstructor.com forward slash members there's a link in the description below this video if you want to check it out all right uh, with that I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the main camera and we'll take a look at the materials and we'll dive right into this one. So um, I told you we're going to be doing an image in color this week. And so far in Getting Sketchy, we haven't done that here. Of course, there's tons of um, videos on the YouTube channel and on the website where I'm working in color. But I haven't done one live here on YouTube. Done many live lessons where we work in color with colored pencils and uh, pastels and so on and so on. Um, but not in Getting Sketchy. Remember, Getting Sketchy is kind of a new segment. Um, we're going to be working on pastel paper. Now, this paper is by Canson. It's called Canson Me Tants Paper. And it doesn't look like how it sounds. Um, but it's Canson Me Tants Paper, and it's paper specifically designed for pastel. But you can use it for all different types of drawing and painting. Well, mostly drawing media. Um, but it has two sides uh, of the paper, just like every other sheet of paper out there. But each side is distinct. Um, there is a side that has a little bit more texture associated with it, a little bit more tooth, and that's great when you're layering lots and lots of layers of colors, whether it's pastel or colored pencils. And then you have another side which is a bit smoother. We're working on the smoother side, and the smoother side allows you to get easy and smooth gradations of tone and value in a short period of time without layering lots of color on the surface, but it still has enough tooth to accept multiple layered applications. I am using my Faber Castell um, polychromos colored pencils for the boat at least um, and here's a look at a 10 of these these are expensive pencils and these are oil based pencils um, many of you probably already have wax based colored pencils and they'll work just fine as well but the Faber Castell pencils opposed to the Prismacolor Premier pencils for example um, stay sharper for a longer period of time I, I like both the Polychromos pencils and the Prismacolor pencils, the Prismacolor Premier pencils. Those are really my two favorites. Um, I kind of lean towards the Prismacolor side of things, but I love these Faber Castle um, Polychromos pencils too. They just they just feel substantial. Um, I've got several colors that I've picked out to use ahead of time. I don't know if I'm going to use all these colors or not, but I've got them off to the side because time is of the essence. Of course. Um, I'll do my very best to name the colors as I use them, but if I don't name them tonight, I'll either put them in the description below the video once the live, uh, the live feed is over, 
or um, or and definitely I'll post them on the website. I always post the video uh, with a little bit of commentary after the broadcast over on the blog. Um, so I've got my pencils laid out and I've got my paper ready. There's one more element here to discuss and that is pan pastels. Now pan pastels, just disregard that nasty yellow pan pastel. <laughs> Still, I have to clean it. I'm not very good at uh, keeping things clean, but they're, they're very easily cleaned here. What pan pastels are is it's basically the pastel material, like soft pastel material, but it's in kind of a container like makeup. And uh, you take these applicators and you can just dip these applicators in and rub and pick up some of the material and then apply it to the paper just like you would with a paintbrush. It's a pretty cool medium. Um, it has some limitations, of course, just like every medium that's out there, but it also is very good for filling in large areas of color quickly. I've got a pretty basic set here in front of me, just basic colors. Um, I'll be using a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the yellow ochre, and a little bit of the white tonight. Um, but anyway, you'll notice this one is really dirty, and the colors do get contaminated while you're using them. Um, unless you're super duper careful and then the process isn't even fun. So when you're done using it, you can go back in and just scrape out some of this uh, contaminated area and then the colors are, are basically like new again. So, But I haven't done that with the yellow there. So don't let that black and that yellow like freak you out or anything. Um, let's see, is that all that I need to talk about before we go into things? Yeah, okay. I have taped off the paper here. This should create some uh, some nice borders when we're done. And uh, now I just need to bring up the timer. So let's see if I can bring up the timer here. If you'll give me just a second. <laughs> um, let's see here. If you'll just be patient with me. I've got all kinds of crazy things happening here. A butterfly popping up. Um, there we go. There's the timer. Let's uh, get the butterfly back out, off of here. Um, that is what we're doing right now for our live lesson series, which is part of the membership program. There we go. Now we're back and ready to go. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 30 minutes here on the timer, um, perhaps, and then we'll get started. There we go. All right, 30 minutes. So we're gonna start here with the pan pastels. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of the yellow ochre up here at the top of the paper. And then I'm gonna start bringing down some of that. And I'm gonna work very quickly here because this is gonna be a real challenge. We're going to handle the background with um, the pan pastel. And then we are going to draw the boat with the colored pencil, and I'm getting so far ahead of myself, I need to draw at least the basic shape of the boat before I start going in here with the pan pastels. I'm just so excited to just grab that applicator and go crazy. So let's go ahead and draw the shape of the boat here, and I'm just gonna draw the shape of the boat with a basic, basic form here, and uh, then we can go in and fill it in. I'm gonna use the, uh, we're gonna fill it in after we do the background. I'm just gonna use a white colored pencil here to uh, draw out the basic shape of the boat. And I'm gonna leave out the reflection. We'll add the reflection at the end. I'm not gonna leave it out of the drawing, but we'll leave it out of this uh, initial drawing here. I'm just looking at the basic form of the boat. I'm not worried about details or anything. I just wanna get it in place. And then we'll avoid it when we fill in some of the colors for the background. It's rather flat here. It's kind of a little bit of a challenging angle to draw the boat from. And then it comes and gets a little bit larger here at the end. Um, there's at the, uh, the bow end of the boat. I'm not really sure which is the bow. I guess is the bow the front of the boat? I, I should just stop talking about boat parts and um, things like that because <laughs> I'm going to look really, really ignorant when it comes to boat stuff here. So the reason why I'm using a white colored pencil here and not a uh, graphite pencil or a uh, black colored pencil or anything like that, I will be using a black colored pencil. I know for some of you who have been following me for a while, I know that's very, very shocking, but um, the Faber-Castell pencils are not quite as strong when it comes to uh, 
black as a neutral. So and I'm just going to extend the end of the boat down a little bit further here. Um, but I usually don't use black at all when I'm drawing in color. But uh, and normally, if I wasn't under a time constraint, I probably would avoid using black here. But the black is just going to allow us to darken the values relatively quickly. And uh, that's something that we need in this particular case. Okay, so um, okay, I think that will probably work for our initial shape of the boat. Remember the reflections missing there. All right, now back to the pan pastels. Um, and let's go ahead next with some white. So this is just yellow ochre up here. Now I'm grabbing some white and I'm just going to go right over the top of it. And I'm going to pull strokes down mainly um, going down, but I'm going to move in different directions in just a minute. So you can create kind of a smoother gradation or a change in tone and value using these pan pastels really, really easily. You can just do small circular strokes. You can go horizontally and vertically, and you can see it applies the color with a relative um, solid application. So up here at the top, we really want the white to be a little bit stronger. So we'll just keep making applications here until we get the white a little bit stronger. And then we'll go back down on the bottom with some blue. And again, if you're just joining the feed tonight live, uh, remember, keep in mind, I, I know that you're maybe posting comments and questions. In fact, I see them up there. <laughs> but I am not going to address anything until the end um, if, if I can. So um, you're welcome to talk amongst yourself. But I'm going to be trying to meet my deadline of getting this done <laughs> in 30 minutes. This fake deadline. Okay, so now let's grab some blue and work our way up from the bottom. And uh, let's go ahead and put the applicator back on and grab some of the blue. And then we're just gonna work up from there. And we can let the blue of the paper do some work for us here too. That's one of the reasons why I chose this paper. But this is a pretty heavy application here I got already. We'll work around the boat for the most part. There's no real need to cover up our drawing. We could though, because the colored pencils will go right over the top of the pan pastels. If you don't have pan pastels, which I know a lot of people probably don't, you can always um, use traditional soft pastels and then just use your finger to blend. That'll work too. And then we'll just let that transition happen just like that. And I can take, uh, I got a little rag here and just kind of clean the applicator off and get some of that material off. And then we can just kind of gently work our way up to create a transition from that lighter orange, which we didn't use orange here, we used uh, yellow ochre, up to that, down to that blue. And then we'll keep bringing some of that lighter value down here as well. And you can see how great this material is here for creating blended areas. All right. Now let's kind of create a little bit of a smoother transition here. I'm going to go at a diagonal. Kind of go back and forth, just trying to smooth out that transition. We can add a little bit more white, probably, right along here.
And then again, we'll smooth out that transition again. And again, I'll mention that we're going really, really quickly here tonight because this is a this is fun. <laughs> but uh, when you're working on your drawing and you're not under a time commitment or you're not trying to fit things in within 30 minutes or or something like that, you can go really, really slow with this, of course, and and really have full control over this transition. And uh, as I'm working on this transition, I'm adjusting the amount of pressure that I'm placing on the applicator to adjust how much of the, those colors are blended, just how much blending actually takes place. And some of this blue down here in the corner is a little bit stronger, so we'll grab a little bit more of it. All right, now for the first applications we're gonna make on the boat, we're gonna use a dark gray. Um, and this is gonna give us a nice, a nice color that has enough contrast in it, but it's not going to basically overtake uh, the drawing like black will. So uh, we're just gonna kind of start here by basically refunding, refunding, by finding our boat here in the, in the sketch that we've already created. And uh, as I go, I'm going to start filling in some of the darker values that I see. Um, since we're going here quickly, I'm going to start filling in those darker values and kind of create somewhat of a little bit of an underpainting here with the colored pencils, perhaps. And then we'll start to filling in some of the local color that we see. And local color is the actual color of the objects. And I'm going to leave out some of the details here. And looking at the drawing again, we need to bring this all the way over about right here. So the back end of the boat needs to come over a little bit further. And we also have to be quite a bit forgiving with ourselves here with the drawing. Um, there's going to be some inconsistencies, and there's going to be inconsistencies in every drawing that you create. So allow those inconsistencies to happen. Of course, if you see an error in your drawing, you should try to fix it, but don't let it uh, overtake you or cause you to freeze up or anything like that. If it's a minor error, it's okay. It's not a big deal. But if you don't allow yourself to have a few a few missteps in, in a drawing. I mean, every mark that we make, no, no mark is ever perfect. We can try to make it as perfect as possible. But if you, if you try to continually correct what you're doing, you'll never finish a drawing. And the ones that you finish, you'll figure out a way to hate them for some reason. You know, hate the drawing. Okay, so I'm just basically mapping out here the inside parts of the boat. Here's the back bench, the light one. And then there's another light bench, not as light as the one that goes across the back. And it makes its way all the way across. And then we have a couple of oars here. So we'll just draw a couple of shapes for them. We don't need these to be super detailed or anything. And let's see, that's the light one. And then we have the front part of the boat here. And there we go. All right. Now I think I'm just going to start back here at the back and wherever I see shapes of darker value I'm going to start filling it in with this gray initially and then we'll add some of the greens and things over the top. So that's the plan and I'm going to work quickly as quickly as I possibly can to start filling in these shapes. So we could work really really slowly and um, you know really 
really develop some of these values and in tones. And if you want to see how that's done, just look around on uh, on the YouTube page. There, you'll see a lot of videos where we're not going really quickly. We're going very very slowly. You can kind of see what's possible as far as building up layered applications of colored pencils and what what type of level you can really bring colored pencils to. And what's so interesting is colored pencils is one of those detail-oriented mediums that for me requires a lot of attention and working slowly. And here with tonight's challenge we're working very very quickly. I think that's kind of kind of interesting. Of course it um, heightens the challenge a little bit. All right, so still with a gray pencil, just just kind of looking at the values. And again, I'm creating somewhat of an underpainting. Um, if you don't know what an underpainting is, an underpainting is if you're if you're creating a traditional painting like with uh, acrylics or oils, you might create a painting underneath that consists only of the values first. And value is the darkness or lightness of a color. And it's actually how we see and understand the world around us. It's very, it's how we understand light, really. Uh, we understand light through the relationships of dark and light tones and values. These are called values. Um, and when we create an underpainting, we might just concentrate only on the values first and then apply what's called local color or the actual color of the object over the top. Like, for example, this boat is green. Um, but it's not just a, a regular green, of course. It's got dark greens and light greens and yellow greens and blue greens and all different types of, of greens in there. But uh, there's each green on the boat, each color has a value associated with it. So by filling in some of these darker values first and just concentrating kind of on the, the shading. Most people would kind of refer to this as shading. Kind of concentrating on that first. Um, then we can go back in with the color over the top and some of the value that we've created in this stage will show through the colors that we add in a minute. And this, this will make sense in, in just a minute if you're not sure what I mean by all that mumbo jumbo. Of course, another way of using colored pencils is just by looking at the colors that you see. And then once you've added the actual colors that you see, you can adjust the values. So uh, it's pretty versatile as far as which approach you take. You have lots of options. Let's see. All right, let's go ahead and start adding some of the colors that we see. And I'm just going to grab several pencils and keep them in my hands. So let's start here with uh, this color, and it is juniper green. I might not be able to, to do that very much. <laughs> Call out the names of the colors because I, I, want to, I want to get this done in 30 minutes. It's going to be difficult to do. And if I, I'll be honest, if I don't get it done in 30 minutes, I will cheat a little bit and go over the time limit. But I really want to get it done in 30 minutes. I think the last one I did, the crab, we, we didn't get it done in 30 minutes. But I'd really like to, really like to do that. So, um, All right, so again, I'm just taking this juniper green and going right over the top of the colors that we've already got in place. So you can see it's creating a darker version of those colors since we've already put down. It's creating a darker juniper green here uh, because we've already got that dark gray in place. And I'm already putting pretty heavy pressure on the pencil at this point. You know, usually you might put several different layers and progressively get darker. But I'm going to go ahead and put some heavier pressure here and we'll just continue on adding this juniper green throughout the boat in the areas where we feel like it needs it. Um, and then we'll adjust the 
the green here too once we've got these in place this next application so I'm gonna put a variety of, of different greens on here so it looks a little bit more representational a little bit more realistic but I'm gonna adjust the pressure that I place on this pencil so that I create um, some different versions of this green so I'll go back over the top of some of these applications with white in just a minute and with some of the different greens and that will adjust the green that we have in place so it doesn't look like it's all the same color of course and typically I like to work one little area at a time and move on to the next I see that there's a little piece here that sits up that we missed so we'll add it really quick all right let's move on to our next green and this one's going to be more of a yellow green this is earth green yellowish what a what a name earth green yellowish um, so this is going to give us a little bit more variety in the green and when we start adding some of the darks and lights in just a minute a lot of what I'm doing right now will probably make a lot more sense but for right now it might not make total sense that's okay might be one of those moments where you're thinking I wonder how this is going to come together and I also have that thought from time to time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think a lot of people have those kinds of thoughts. And the moment any type of doubt creeps in uh, when they're drawing or painting, they stop. And that's no good. Remember, we got to keep working through those things. We all face those things as artists. We all deal with feelings of doubt and wondering if the decisions we're making are the right decisions and if you're not feeling that then you're probably overconfident as an artist you probably think you're doing a lot better <laughs> than you are that's bad to say i shouldn't say that but um i think some of that is true um, i think a lot of people who who second guess themselves unfortunately feel like that that is weird or strange that they're wondering if what they're doing is right and it makes them feel a little bit more um, doubt in the process and that's that's no good all right uh, next green is olive green yellowish well I'm glad we're sticking with the yellowish ones so just a little bit more green here and there just for a little bit of variety we're not going to get all the details in here um, of everything that's going on in the boat but we do want to make sure that we've got a variety of different greens going on here so it feels more natural and it looks like there's kind of a green rope that's making its way over and down and that's going to have our I guess that is a anchor there. All right, now let's let's go ahead and start pushing some of the values and see what happens. Uh, I know that there's still um, that little floaty thing to add there. Um, I'm going to start here with uh, gray. This is cold gray two, not to be confused with cold gray number one or number three. This is cold gray number two. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go right over the top of the, the, the light green, the light application of green that I've created for that middle bench. And let's see, where else can we use this gray? We'll use it on the front side of the bench right behind it. And this is just going to mix some of the colors that we have in place. 
and make it a little bit more of an even application. Um, and it's also going to give us a little bit more of a broader range of value. So it's going to lighten up some of the tones and some of the areas are going to start to make a little bit more sense. But it really won't make total sense until we've got that contrast going on between the, the darks. Remember right now all we've used is that dark gray. And we'll use some of this lighter gray up here on the front side of the boat. There's kind of a weathered area up here. And then the top part this little piece that sticks up. And since we don't have a whole lot of layers down, we can go right over the top of some of the applications that we've already made. And it's just affecting the value. All right, now let's grab some white and make some things a little bit lighter, like the back bench. That's pretty strong. We can probably get away with adding white there. And then we're going to start lightening up some of the other values too. So right over the top of some of the greens that we've already applied. especially right here along the inside part of the right side of the boat there. And we'll lighten up this front end too. What I mean by the front end is this side of the boat there. All right. Now let's bring out a little bit more contrast. I see we've got four minutes left and we haven't even started on the, the shadow. <laughs> so we'll go over, but that's no big deal. So now I'm going to grab a little bit of black and we're going to start to pull out some of the details here. Um, and I'm not, I'm not outlining here, but I'm just making some of the darker values a little bit darker. And it's going to increase the contrast and uh, make, make the details of the boat make a little bit more sense here. So we'll just grab a little bit of that black and bring it up just a little bit down the side here, and especially where the boat meets the water, which it won't take us long to do that reflection. And you can see right here on the end where the front end of the boat is, we have these really dark shadows happening here, so now we can make them the proper darkness. And I should also point out, I, I talked about using black at the beginning and how black is really strong. I think I did, maybe I alluded to it. But black is very, very strong and it can, when used by itself, it can make a drawing appear flat and unnatural and that's usually why I try to avoid it, uh, using it at all, at all if, if at all possible. Um, but, in this case, we're really not using black by itself. It's really um, a combination of black and the colors that we've already got in place. Even though it's just a few layers of color, um, it's still there's still some color there in place. So that makes a difference. And right here along the edge here. And then the front end here is just slightly darker. So 
So we'll just give it a slight bit of darker tone with the black. And again, this is this is really an example of using colored pencils quickly. So we're skipping some of the details here and uh, you know you can work a lot slower if you want, but then that takes the, the challenge, <laughs> takes the, the Tom challenge out of everything, doesn't it? Put a little shadow underneath that or there. Make some of these sections a little bit darker. Don't want to go crazy with the black. But it does help to create some of the little detail things. That help to make this look more like a a boat in the water, at least something floating out there. All right, uh, now let's go ahead and reinforce a little bit of shadow underneath this rope and just have it tied down here. A little bit of shadow down here at the front and then we'll draw the ball in the water here and then we'll, we'll add the um, shadow even though even though there's only one minute left so the color I'm using here is um, Papian Papian red I think I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing that I usually um, don't need to worry too much about reading the names of the colors but Papian Papian <laughs> It's kind of a peachy red, is what it is. And then over the top, a little bit of white here. This is going to be a, a subtle little thing down here anyway. So a little bit of black to add a couple of details. And now all it's missing is a reflection, and the reflection is going to make a huge difference. So let's go back to the dark gray that we were using before. There it is. And the first thing I'm going to do is just draw the shape of our reflection. It kind of comes forward like this. And then we have the end right from the bottom. That sticks out here. And then over and down And this kind of comes down and then back across. And then again, I'm just looking at the overall shapes. And uh, we'll do it the same way that we did before. We'll start by just kind of creating a little bit of an underpainting here. Still sticking with the, the gray, the dark gray that we used initially. And I'll just go ahead and fill in that, pretty much that entire shape here. We'll do this initially. And we'll go back and put a little bit more variety in it. And of course, this part of the shadow is going to be the darkest. And before we get too carried away here, let's put a little bit of a reflection of the ball or the spherical thing. A little bit of gray and then a little bit of that Pompeian red <laughs> right there in there. That doesn't look like much yet, but it will in just a minute. And now we can just start making things a little bit darker here with another application before we grab one of the greens. And I know the Tom is up. But we will keep going, or we'll just live in that one second perpetual, uh, that one second for 
um, forever. I was trying to say in perpetually, in perpetual, <laughs> forever. <laughs> you know what I was trying to say? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. <laughs> All right, there's a little piece that comes off the top there. And then even in the shadow, and even in the reflection, I keep wanting to call this a shadow for some reason, but even in the reflection, we have this dark shadow. It goes right up along the side of the boat. You probably make that shadow a little bit darker on the boat, come to think of it. And then shadow is a little bit, or the reflection is a little bit darker at the back. And then it gets a little bit lighter as it comes forward. but Everything in this reflection is darker than uh, what's happening on the boat. It's a darker value, of course. So it's not the exact color. It's not the same color as what's happening on the boat. And if you drew it with the same color, it would look a little strange, probably. So, Well, the same color, but a different value, a darker value. All right, let's go ahead and add some green before we get dark again. And we'll use our juniper green here. So there is a slight bit of green here in the reflection. And you can see how easily these pencils go right over the top of the pan pastel. And this is not as dark as our shadow is, or our reflection is going to be. So um, we're going to go back over the top of it in just a minute with a little bit of a darker value. We're going to use the black. So this is probably going to end up being closer to 45 minutes. But I, I know I could do this in 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably if I wasn't talking the whole time and just just drawing but uh, you know 45 minutes that's not too bad so just like we did with the body of the boat here we're adding a little a bit of variety of greens so um, starting with that juniper green and then let's switch over to another one of the greens that we used um, we used this didn't we earth green yellowish we're going to use this mainly at the end of the boat here at the uh, front end of the reflection where it's a little bit lighter We're getting closer. And then right up here. Okay, before we start doing the darks, let's add a little bit of lighter tone to this. Uh, so there's a lighter value that goes right up along the side here. And we'll just do this with the light gray. And then we'll lighten up the reflection a little bit here on the end. And we'll do the same thing down here. And I know there's a little bit of writing and stuff on the side of the boat. We'll, we'll add those final details in just a minute. All right, now let's make the reflection as dark as it should be. So now we'll grab the black and make the reflection dark. And in the process, we'll increase the contrast. and Everything should start to come together here. And then we'll put our final details on and we'll pull off the tape, which won't count for any of our time. <laughs> so right along the end here we'll 
let that edge be pretty sharp. We don't want to lose that lighter tone that comes through here. And we also don't want to get too dark. in areas here. So we don't want to get too dark or too strong up here towards the end of the boat where the reflection is lighter. All right, we can get pretty dark under here though. And especially right where that boat meets the water. And by doing so, we'll make our little bobber stand out a little bit more. I'm trying to make directional strokes in the direction that makes sense. Um, you know, so for the most part, I follow the, the cross contours of the form of the boat. So as my marks move around the boat, it's almost like I'm moving my finger around the form of the boat uh, as I'm making the strokes. And that helps to create the illusion of form in the drawing through just um, directional strokes that you make with the pencil. Every little bit that you can do will help, that can help, you should do to help create the illusions that you need to create in a drawing. Okay, um, so now let's grab just, you know, we'll use the, the red that we used before, and we'll put a little bit of that color here along the side of the boat, because that's kind of what's happening in our reference. And we'll do the same thing in the reflection. There's a little bit of white writing up here at the top, the front end. We won't spell anything out, but we'll just give an indication of it both on the boat and in the reflection. And then we'll just bring out the, this bobber thing a little bit more with some white. And you know what? There is another piece back here on the back. We gotta add that, right? So I'll just draw the shape for it. And a little bit of gray. And then just a little bit of black here. All right, and there we go. There's our, our color drawing in 30 minutes. But before we're before we say it wasn't 30 minutes, okay, it was more like 40 minutes. But before we say it's finished, let's go ahead and pull the tape off so we can see these nice sharp edges. Now, when you're pulling tape off that's been on a surface, you want to make sure that you don't just pull straight down. Um, you want to kind of pull at an angle so that it comes off a little bit easier and it doesn't tear. So I'm pulling right here at, an, at a 90 degree angle. So you can see the tape is at a 45 degree angle right here, but I'm pulling it perpendicular. So I'm pulling it away from the artwork. And if you go slowly and take your time, usually the tape will pull off without a big deal at all. So across the top here, I'm going to pull upwards because that is perpendicular. You see how easy that comes off? Now, if you still have problems with pulling tape off of an artwork when you're finished, you might wanna consider uh, doing something like taping your pants or taping some type of fabric before you actually uh, put the tape on the surface because that will, the tape will pick up a little bit of lint unless you're a lintless person and um, it will 
and make it a little bit easier to pull off when you're done. We gotta pull this tape off. We gotta pull off this bottom piece first. Oh, there's a little bit of tearing there. Must have went too quick there. That's not too big of a deal. And then we'll pull the rest of it off here. And now our drawing has these nice clean lines, even though it looks crooked in the camera here. There we go. So not too bad for 40-ish minutes. It's a little bit over 30 minutes, but it was still a good drawing exercise. Um, it's pretty fun to, to use the pan pastels to get color down pretty quickly and get right over the top of it with uh, colored pencil applications. So you can imagine how far we could take a drawing like this if we spent twice as long or if we spent three times or four times as long. So even though we're doing things really quick here, that that's just kind of more for fun and just to loosen up and, and enhance your, your sketching skills because even when you're creating a quick sketch like this, you're using the same uh, drawing skills or using the same mind muscles that you would if you were creating a more finished drawing. So I encourage you to draw every day, draw whatever you possibly can um, because the more you draw, the better you're gonna get at drawing. Okay, let me go ahead and switch over here. Move the mic out of the way. So thank you guys for sticking around and watching tonight's episode. I hope you learned a couple of things. I hope you enjoyed the broadcast. I'm gonna quickly go through the uh, the comments here, just the last ones. Uh, you're welcome, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> just a lot of people saying hi. I guess they heard the part where I wasn't answering too many questions. So um, anyway, if you want to learn more about our program over, the virtual, over at the virtualinstructor.com, there is a link below. You can go check it out. We have weekly live lessons, which are way more in depth that are broadcast an hour each week. And uh, we work slowly and deliberately and create a variety of different uh, or cre create a variety of different forms of artworks using a variety of different types of media. We also have uh, a ton of courses over there. We just released 25 Days to Better Drawings, which features 10 and a half hours of video content um, and 153 pages of eBooks. It is um, a serious course, but it's all included in the membership program. Again, if you want to check it out, there is a link below. Uh, so again, I'd encourage you to practice drawing all the time. I'll do these getting sketchy live episodes as much as I possibly can. Now that 25 days to better drawings is complete, I can start creating some more of the longer videos that I publish here on YouTube. So look forward to, to those pretty soon. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. And uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign out for this evening. Good night, everybody.